I just wait for some people to come in. First one, hello, Maximilian. Hello, oh, hi, Björn. <laughs> nice to see you. Who else is coming? Many people are coming in. Hi. Hi. Okay, cool. So it's 10 p.m. in Berlin. Uh, the news for today, we're here to speak with Pascal Sender, the Swiss artist about his art. My name is Annika. Jörn König and I, we curate the um, ex exhibition series, The Artist is Online, together. Um, Pascal, who now lives in London, is part of the group show. And today we have a sort of different program. Pascal and I go live together now and do a short talk of 15 minutes. And then we go offline that Pascal can get ready for his performance. And for this performance, we need you. So we're going to be back around 10.30. So please tune in again and join us for the live performance because we need you for this one. And now let's try to find Pascal. There he is. <clears throat> Waiting for Pascal. Hello. Hi, there you are. How are you? Do you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? One second. I do a performance and drink coke. Yeah. So now I can hear you clearly and loud. <laughs> okay, cool. You can hear me now. So yeah. Hi. Welcome. Good evening. You're in London. And you're in London and you've studied in Düsseldorf in Germany before. And now yeah. you're finishing, you're about to finish your studies in London. Why did you decide to leave Germany? Mm, five years ago, I had the opportunity to do uh, an exchange. I was in Peter Doig's class and he had an exchange program to the Royal Academy School. And so I could be in London for two months and I was really happy in the city and especially fall in love with the school. And since then, I tried it again and again and applied uh, to the RA and finally it worked out. So I'm here now, living my dream, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but is, it, is, is studying uh, in London different uh, from studying in Germany? Yeah, I would say so. Um, I don't want to go deeper into this, but I see a difference and I actually really wanted that to have like another, another side of education. And I think I started really young in Germany. So for me, it was quite important to have again time to learn and to develop and experiment. Okay, cool. And I mean, London is quite different from Düsseldorf, I guess. So you're on the metro a lot and we're showing a series from you. Uh, in as part of the group show, which you work on on the metro. So how did this come about? I mean, you work in transit now mostly and at, at airports and you said when you walk around the house and so on and so on. Yeah, I would say I'm uh, much more in traffic than before. Before I had a nice bike ride on the Rhine to my studio and I had to get used to it, I have to say. And I think it was it was both. Somehow it's now an obsession to kind of handle the situation, the packed situation in the tube. But on the other side, it's also to use this time when I'm on the way. And I thought like, we are to go as society in a way, like everything is on the go and in a rush. And I actually wanted to, to use this kind of power or moment to create something in a limited time space. So all the sketches on the phone, they only happen while I'm in transit. As soon as I get to a point or to a place I start. And then you don't go back to it, you stop and it's it's finished, no chance. It's the first layer, the digital layer is oh. done completely on the iPhone and I just paint it with my finger and collage the photos together. And yeah, on some level I accept it then that the digital work part is finished. And then I print them out, I overpaint them, I send the color away again. And then as a, a physical process, process starts that is like completely different and super slow and super minimal. Mm -hmm. yeah. And at some point, or I think you're working with augmented reality as a painter. Why does the medium interest you? I would say a few years ago, I started in VR creating stuff and there I got definitely hooked up. And before that I already had to, 
build my website and I wanted to do it by myself. So there I got in touch with coding and I think both together is a kind of, is augmented reality. And in a way, as a painter, it's all about an illusion, not all about, but for me, I'm really interested also in an illusion of perspective and what, uh, yeah, and then what can VR do with it is for me, like the questions are so new and so big and so different. And I'm actually just always searching for a new challenge. And in that case, I found it in that, in like programming face filters or, um, doing whole virtual reality games. Uh, I'm actually doing loads of different stuff that I mostly also see as training and not actually like publish or show to people. Yeah, I'm a Christian. <laughs> but this is a filter you've published on your account, right? Yeah. And I, I'm especially interested in this new media form where it's not anymore a film that has a start and the end where we know how long we have to look. There's Johan. Hi, Johan. Hey, Johan. I think it's super interesting because people are actually forced to uh, engage with the world and mm -hmm. be part of it somehow. What, I've, what, I, what I'm looking for when I do these live performances, I'm also looking for a, a conceptual way of integrating viewers that they are not any much as spect uh, spectators, that they are like actual part, that they can be part of it. But yes. And I <laughs> It's so confusing looking at someone <laughs> with an AR filter on. It's no, 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 that's, these are my actual eyes. <laughs> and what else do you have? Filters? Yeah, filters from you. I mean, we yeah, launched the filters. This is one of my favorites, one of the first <laughs> ones, where I try to show what, what, the, what the phone is actually doing, kind of reproducing your face. And here you are inside of the phone and you can see yourself. And if you open your mouth. Oh, wow. You can shoot ones and zeros. And I would say in most of my filters, you have a hidden feature that I don't explain. Or in the filter that Koenig just launched today, you also have like three different layers. And I find it super interesting that most, like a lot of people enter just the first one and they are happy. And then others enter more and search for something. But... That's exactly what I mean. There is no starting point or an end point. It's more something where we all, where the viewer has to decide. Yeah. Johan has fun with your filters. He loves the eyes, <laughs> he says. <laughs> so uh, do you want to show us another filter before we speak about the uh, Perspect filter we launched today? Uh, no, let's go on. Let's, go, let's move on to the Perspect one. Okay. There you are already using it. Yeah. Thank you for sending Haas people. We love you too, very much. Yeah, so thank with... you for having me here. It's so exciting. I'm at home since weeks and it feels really like I'm not at home for a moment now. For 15 minutes and then for another 30 minutes when you have to paint. So about the filter we launched, what's, what's the idea behind it? I mean, we see our face and then I think you have to tap the screen, right? Exactly, to leave the first level. But I also, I could add an instruction, but I didn't want it to. So in that case, if I press the screen, I don't know if that function now because of the comments. Damn it. I don't think so. Yeah, you uh, want but to I can explain. Again in a minute. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you tap the screen once, then you enter the kind of architecture that is behind. But I thought it's interesting to also hide that the architecture of the illusion of that, because if you see a flat image, it's already integrated too. And this kind of 3D level is something where uh, I am still getting into it. And it's like, when you when you then enter this kind of architecture, it's the the moment where you can zoom, I think then you start to understand this kind of endless, limitless space that is available. And I've tried in some way to make that a bit feelable, that you can feel that a bit. I mean, and in the filter, I mean, you, you've worked with a super famous masterpiece. Um, and I mean, people who studied art history, we all had to, had to learn. <laughs> and this always came up in exams so we all had to learn about this it's yeah. the holy trinity fresco by masaccio so when i saw your filter i was like no 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 this is artistry it's so funny um that you turned it into a filter yeah 
yeah, and instead I, of yeah actually since i started to doing filters or learning it i would say it's exactly a year ago where i first did my first filter with spark ar and i had to learn the software i actually from the beginning on i wanted to create something that is kind of the opposite that just shows what happens when you have a filter on your face mm -hmm. so when the architecture is moving in the filter it's not something that spark ar gave me from the beginning i had a script that i just typed in random numbers for a really long time until uh, I had a moment where the architecture was like going with my eyes and distort in a way that it looks quite like the reality. And actually that was something like a goal I set to myself from the beginning. And it's to understand if, uh, like one thing is if the camera position sees your eyes and positions a face mask onto your face, and the mm -hmm. other thing is to have something on your screen that follows your eyes. Well, easy saying, um, the, the old master was also reproducing um, a, a method that an architect invented. Mm -hmm. And I'm somehow wanted to do the same, but I just not just wanted to use the effect that Spark AI gives me. I wanted to understand it and program it on a, on a little scale by myself. And it's and it's incredible what's possible in with a, doing with a filter. I mean, we spoke about um, the filter NDPG uh, the artist launched, I think, sort of like two or three weeks ago, and he built a solo show inside mm -hmm. a filter. So you he actually built a white cube. Yeah. And, yeah. and and you can walk around, and then he put a, a piece of himself in the middle middle of the room, and then you can walk around, and there's pieces on the wall. And it's incredible what, what's possible in a filter. It's not just a layer on your face or like cute puppy ears or so. Mm, that's actually the game at the moment, the challenge. Yeah. What, a filter is limited to four megabytes. Four megabytes is normally the size of a photograph, a good one. Mm. So whatever you do, you have to reduce it to a really small amount of data. And I think a lot of people are... Yeah, going crazy and like what is possible. And I saw actually other filters where you can nearly not believe and I have no idea how it's done, but I'm also trying to put as much into it. But on the other side, I was more trying to figure out how to play with the engagement that actually, what I said before, that it is interactive mm. and people have to enter the levels and or the layers. Yeah. And Johan asked uh, if you could show the filter with the eyes again. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite and my first one. And also, my it has the most impressions, around a half million. And it's not much. Normal filters have much more. Yeah, I know. But it's it's a lot still, half a million. Yeah, especially for I did it and I have to say, I was not looking at it for days. And then later, I just found out that loads of people used it. It was actually like the first moment where I got excited about filters. And how many filters have you released by now? Oh, I think I got done around 10 or 12, but on my profile, there are just six visible or seven. I constantly update them and I have to say Spark AR is not easy. They do improvements every week and sometimes then your old filters do not work anymore. So it's a constant update <laughs> game. This filter is so confusing. <laughs> And it's kind of weirdly randomized, so it's never fully the same. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Someone, right. I mean, let's, let's ask some questions, people. You can ask questions, and then Pascal and I go offline because he needs to get ready for his performance, and then please tune in again at um, 10, uh, no, 30 minutes past 10. <laughs> Lauren, I think filters have to be low rest. <clears throat> because they have to be loaded really fast, especially if you are not in, in a Wi-Fi network. And I quite understand that. And I have filters who are so small that they like load like this. And that's why. On the other side, yeah. And I think. You look really good. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. He also tried to reach the maximum. It's around 280s custom design glasses that I draw by myself and you can use them all and change by open your mouth. Yes. Okay, I think I'm ready to draw something. Um, okay, cool. 
So let's so meet much again. So people in... are talking online, so let's do some. Yeah, let's let's meet again in 15 minutes, right? Yeah, perfect. Okay, people, see you. See you. See you. Bye. Bye bye. Hello again. Waiting for people to come in. Hello. We're back after a short break. We just had a